thank you for joining us here at Open Door Baptist Church. It is our goal to lead people through the open door of salvation, strength, and service. We are praying that through this broadcast, your life will be changed. You can connect with us by going to connect.odbc-church.com and let us know how God used this message in your life. Hey folks, Pastor Dennis Schaefer here at Open Door Baptist Church. Thank you for coming and gathering together. And I am looking forward to our time together in God's Word in just a few moments. In just a second, we're going to show you a few announcements. And I hope that you're excited and praying about what God is continuing to do. Yes, I know that we got another 15-day extension on our stay-at-home orders. But I know that God's going to continue to work. So let's continue to encourage each other and pray for each other during this time. In fact, as we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can come together, that we can worship you no matter where we may be, and we thank you for your unchanging word and the truths that you have for us in it this evening. As we look into your word, we ask that you would speak to us and encourage us as we remember each other even right now, as we pray for each other and lift each other up. I ask that you would help us to find comfort and encouragement in those prayers and knowing that you hear and that you want to continue you to provide grace for these strange times in our world. Please bless together uh, this time together that we have. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I know there's several things that are going on. Again, the drive-in service this coming Sunday at 1030, so I hope that you're planning to be here for that. I want to encourage you in just a few moments, we'll be going through our study on mind sieges. So if you have not yet done that, go pick up the uh, notes for tonight, and you'll have those to be able to follow along as we go through with the verses and and all that as well. I really enjoy the study, and one thing I thought is, since this is a big topic, we're talking about mind sieges, I kind of figured there would be some difficulties through the day, and guess what? There has been, and we know that the devil is fighting, but let's continue to stand strongly in him, and we'll look forward to jumping into his word in just a second, but before we even go that far, in just a second, we'll show you announcements. As we think about the announcements, as you read through those, I want you to do a couple things. Number one, I want you to say hello, connect with the people who are on there. I'll stop for a second. Okay, you can do that. And then also I want you to share this and also just be attentive um, to what God has for us um, as we study his word just a few seconds. Thank you to those who have been faithful to give. In fact, I did not even mention it this last Sunday, uh, but many of you have been uh, continue to be faithful in your giving. And I want to say thank you uh, for your faithfulness to God uh, in doing so. And we've been just grateful to be able to see how God has continued to uh, bless and to minister through our church family. In fact, we had two people sign up for Bible studies uh, yesterday, and we're excited about that. So those emails have gone out. So now we have more than a dozen of people uh, who are involved with those. So please be praying for them. Uh, but here's a few announcements. After we have those announcements, we are going to open our Bibles and uh, take a second to uh, get those notes, and we'll go come back together in just a second uh, to open God's Word and learn from it about the subject of mind sieges. <music> We hope you will join us online for our KMP3 kickoff night on Friday, May 2nd at 6.30. All you need to do is register at odbc-church.com. Each week we will post videos to help you learn your music and motions for our musical this fall. Along with music, there will be do-at-home crafts and much more. We have something for both our first through sixth graders and our preschool ages three to kindergarten. So go register at odbc-church.com and join in on the fun on May 1st. Well, all right. I hope that you got your Bible out, that you've got a pen, and you're ready to take some notes, jot a few things down, because we're going to be talking about mind sieges for the next little bit. And uh, this is an important subject. We look at Ephesians 6, 17, and we focused on this part of the armor last week, and I mentioned we're going to delve more into it this week uh, as we're talking specifically about 
um, these strongholds. And we look at Ephesians 6, 17, and it says this, and take the helmet of salvation. And specifically talking about our mind, our thinking, and making sure that we have the helmet of salvation. So we've been looking here at some of the strongholds, and we'll be looking at some things even next week about the subject of strongholds and how to encounter them and how to beat them, really. And we started out looking at 2 Corinthians 10.4 last time. Um, I like to think of 10.4 like your truck driver, like 10.4, good, uh, good buddy. But here we go, 2 Corinthians 10.4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, uh, through God to the pulling down of, you see those two words, strongholds. Now, we look at these strongholds, and there are many strongholds that even Christians face. Understand that the world faces strongholds, but as Christians, we can have strongholds in our lives, and Christians face these seemingly impenetrable outposts of Satan's kingdom. And one of the clear areas of battle is the mind. Your mind, my mind, our minds, we realize that there's a great battle. And we need to be settled on our salvation, and we need to know that we are a part of God's kingdom. Otherwise, we will end up in the stronghold that shows itself in its various forms of what I'll call tonight stinking thinking. We have to make sure that our mind is thinking about the right thing. So let me kind of help you with a few things. Last time we talked about the complete soldier. We talked about the complete armor. I'm going to complete that thought a little bit more uh, tonight as we look at mind sieges. And we think about these outposts that the devil has and we allow to have inside of us as we talk about this, the complete thought. We have to make sure that we have the complete thought and we put all of this together. Because as we noticed last time, we saw all these different pieces of armor, uh, and we saw them beginning there um, in verse number 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. So if we're going to stand, we need to have all the armor of God. And then he says to stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So we learn here about all these various pieces of the armor, but let's think about this just for a little bit. The complete thought, the first thought underneath of that is this. The armor cannot function without salvation's helmet. We understand you're not going to get God's armor unless you are a child of God. We see in Ephesians 6.10 where he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You cannot have God's armor without God's presence in your life. But we also understand that the armor needs the mind to be able to process the scenario that we see that is going on and to figure out what to do with the mind sieges and the attacks that come against us. Without the helmet of salvation, the rest of the armor is unanimated and unruly at best. We think about truth. Truth's belt gets wrapped up in lies. Unrighteousness destroys. The gospel of peace, uh, peace halts. Faith gives way to fear, distrust, and anxiety. Scripture will become then a selfish weapon or is completely ignored, and prayer fades to selfish gain. So, the armor itself cannot function without the helmet of salvation. We need to make sure that we have this assurance that we have God's salvation in our lives. As I, I have said it many, many times, there's one thing that's better than being saved, and that's being saved and knowing it. We need to have that assurance in our lives so that the armor can function properly. But we learn this, is, and that's really the next point, the armor's strength is in assurance. That's the blank. Second Peter, if you look over there, we look at Second Peter, chapter number one. I want to read to you verses thir three through eleven and understand. Here, the, the apostle Peter is giving us some uh, ideas about the assurance about how to grow in our walk with Jesus Christ. He writes these words: According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Great thoughts. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, 
you're having a bad day, claim the promises of God, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Here we go, talking about the spiritual battle, having a divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We're talking about the things of our mind. Guess what? We have lustful thoughts. We have things in our mind that we have to battle against that Satan will throw at us. And besides this, this is what he says, giving all diligence. So we're entering into battle. How do we do this? We're going to grow in God. How do we do it? If we know Christ, giving all diligence, add to your faith, add to your salvation, if you will, virtue. And then he adds to that virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to catch verse number nine. Focus on it real quick. Let this sink in. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath, you see the next word, forgotten, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We look at this and uh, we can see how Peter is trying to do a great teaching uh, to help us to understand how we can walk uh, and to stand in these mind sieges. Why? Because he's trying to remind us that if we're going to be victorious, that we need to have the assurance of God's salvation in our lives. Uh, we, we know this. You, if you turn on the television, which many of us have seen a lot of different television uh, over the last few weeks, Subaru, Subaru has several commercials drawing attention to buyers and their desire for a safe vehicle. You ever ridden in a car with somebody where you're driving and the other person is very anxious? Doesn't that just make the car ride like not fun anymore? Well, the same is true with a Christian who consciously or subconsciously has weakened his sense of assurance in God. If you are weak on your relationship with God, it'll be difficult for you to win battles at all, or at least consistently. Let me tell you where this starts. It starts in the mind. It's the very first place that Adam and Eve were attacked by whom? By the devil. It was in their thoughts. And very interestingly, if you were to look at the rest of 2 Peter, he uses other words that reference the mind, such as the word remember. And he shows us these ideas throughout the book. He uses these words describing the importance of building the mind, including memory mnemonics, which help us to remember Scripture. Um, uh, it used to be in, in here in America uh, that children learned according to the New England Primer, and they had Bible verses and things there. The Jews would use uh, Psalm 119, which has the Jewish alphabet, to help reinforce different concepts. Why? Because if you are unassured of your relationship with God, about which kingdom it is that you stand for, what power is yours in Jesus Christ, then it will be unlikely that you'll be able to conquer the strongholds that are in your mind. Remember this, the mind only knows what comes to it. And then it uses that information to make decisions. And when we feed our minds with misinformation, one of the big topics today is false news. Uh, that's supposedly, that is really available out there. Unhealthy narratives that are uh, available in many ways. Emotion driving enzymes, we'll talk about a little bit. Fantasy and escape. Realistic sarcasm. Uh, by the way, it's in some of that idea, we believe that we deserve something in life. We equip ourselves with all of these types of thoughts for failure. And by the way, the more we give ways to failure, the more we feel as if we are doomed to live it out. Uh, I oftentimes call it the Charlie Brown syndrome. You remember how Lucy would hold the football and uh, here comes Charlie Brown, he would try to kick the football and you know what happened, she would pull the football away and you know, Charlie Brown wasn't able to kick it. And uh, so Charlie Brown always felt like the loser and he would end up saying those words, good grief, right? 
And some of you and some of us go through life and we kind of feel like the whole world is against us because of this mindset that we have given ourselves to. And that in and of itself can become a stronghold in your life. So there's the complete thought. Let's now talk about the bad thought. The bad thought. When a Christian gives into bad thinking of any sort, we can give a foothold and then a stronghold to Satan. And this is compounded in the brain by feeding fleshly desires that shortcut the process to those fleshly desires, addicting the flesh to false perceptions. So here's a few things, bad thoughts, if you will. The first one is lies, lies. Uh, and you can look over here in Second Peter 1, in verse number 9, it says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Guess what? We can be convinced that we are not a part of God's kingdom, and then we can be convinced of anything. So important to have the assurance of God's salvation in your life so that you cannot be unconvinced, if you will, of it, so that you can take that stand that God wants you to take. Every sin, every sin begins with a lie. A second thing when it comes to the bad thoughts is this, addictions, addictions. Now, we're talking about mind seizures. We're talking about strongholds that come up in our lives. So I understand it's possible somebody says a lie that may not become addictive, uh, uh, but we understand that long-term lies, that long-term sin will eventually become an addiction in our lives. Look over at 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10, and we started here last time in our previous study, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. Paul writes this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Well, the way that we think and what we think about becomes a medical issue. What we think about affects us physically in our bodies, like any sin. We think of James 1.15, then when lust conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So like any sin, the Bible says that sin leads to death. And there are varying degrees of addiction, as well as addictive substances, some are addicted to adrenaline rushes. Some are addicted to alcohol and drugs. Uh, statistically, I got a report this past week that shows that 11%, 11% of our local community is addicted to opioids. In addition to that, we know that studies have shown that recently during the coronavirus pandemic that there have been, there's a 55% increase in drinking. And uh, I think just about every time I have gone to get gas and had to go into the gas station or something, there's a line of people, and guess what they've gone? They've gone to the cooler, and they have gotten beer to be able to take home. It's all over the place. And we think about people who are addicted to different things. Think about it. Uh, during this time, people are self-medicating, and they are shortcutting the way of relief to find some type of happiness and release during this time. We think of other addictions like pornography, and they've grown into a pandemic of its own. In fact, it's much larger than the coronavirus pandemic. One of the world's largest financial empires are built around um, pornography. We think about loneliness and bitterness. Many negative thoughts can be addictive. And the problem with this negative mental addictions like these things is that they can never be fulfilled and they continue to spiral down and eventually can become out of control. Negative mental actions to shortcut our way to a sense of reward follow the same path. 
the same path as illicit drugs. So sometimes when we have these feelings and we uh, desire certain things in life, you say, well, I don't take drugs. But oftentimes these thoughts that we have, that we desire to have these joyous feelings and uh, different things fulfilled in our bodies, uh, understand that in your body that we can short circuit those things. And there is what is called the mesolimbic dopamine pathway. And essentially that's part of the pathway that connects in your brain and helps you to feel uh, like you've been successful at something or you feel good about something in life. And eventually what happens is this, the more we get involved with these types of thoughts that are negative and ungodly, what starts to happen is we have to have additional hits, just like a person who's addicted to drugs. And we, we have to have those things in order to feel that greater sense of reward. And, and your body craves it. And in time, it becomes an addictive cycle that can be, scientific, scientists and medical doctors say, it can be more powerful than street drugs. And over time, it can have similar results even to your own brain's function. We remember is what we're looking at right now is about this, uh, our, our thinking, the bad thought process, that addiction is a dangerous, dangerous thing. And it is a mind siege by the devil. He has established a strong head, stronghold in our mind, and we have to be able to work through it. And we can with God's uncommon grace. And we'll come to that in just a second. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this section is the word cover-ups. We have lies, we got addiction, and we have cover-ups. Uh, Proverbs 28, 13 says this, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Hey, when it comes to the bad thoughts that we have, one of the most difficult and dangerous things that happens is this. We don't even recognize it. And sometimes we don't even, are not even willing to admit it. Um, let me just remind you, we need to learn to admit our bad thoughts, things that are unbecoming to the helmet of salvation. Why? If we do that, then they can be covered under God's forgiveness. Let me just share this other verse with you, 1 Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. Why? This is what happens when we have love in a congregation, when we, have a, uh, we understand God's love in our lives, here's what he says, for charity or love shall cover the multitude of sins. Hey, I know sometimes we want to cover our sin, but especially when it comes to our thought life, let's admit it to God. And if there's something that we need to help or, or pray about or ask uh, other people for help with uh, in our lives, let's admit it so that we can find that help to cover those sins up through forgiveness. So let's, con let's confess our sins. Let's just not cover those things up. Uh, let's confess them before God, and uh, let's let God help those sins to be covered under his grace and his mercy. One final thought for you uh, in our study, the good thought. You say, okay, well, I've got these bad thoughts. What do I do with them? I, Satan's got a stronghold. At some point, I've given him a foothold, and now he, he's taken a city. And I've been battling it for a long time. What do you do? How can you win against the mind siege that the devil has in your life? Well, here's a few thoughts. And I hope you take these to, uh, to mind. The first one is to bring every thought into captivity. Now, we read this verse earlier, but here's a great reminder. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, let me just read to you as well in Proverbs 4. 23, uh, I put this verse often to you. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Sometimes we give thoughts a pass, don't we? And by the way, that's kind of how sin starts in the first place. We kind of give a thought a pass. It's like, oh, I'm just not sure about that, or that's completely wrong, but I'm going to let it go. But what we do is we give those thoughts a pass. We say something like this, it's going to be okay. Sometimes we just outright are rebellious. We say, oh, I want this thought, right? But Galatians 5, 9 tells us to be very, very careful where it says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And we need to be careful because, yeah, one little thought can affect us greatly. 
we look at our passage where we just read in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, and any thought that is opposed to humility, that means thoughts of pride, or any thought that is opposed to our obedience and following what God has for us in life, guess what? Humility and obedience ought to be buzzwords in our brains. Too much I is a problem. And even though it's a little word, it brings a world of trouble. So, we need to make sure that we bring every thought into captivity. A second thought is this. Think positively and prayerfully. Now, I want you to think positively in a biblical manner, not just some of these self-help books and saying, oh, I'm really good, and talk to yourself in the mirror and repeat after me and say all these different things and say, uh, you know, just get hyped up about the day. We need to learn to think in a biblical manner that is positive and prayerful. Uh, look, at, look at Philippians 4. I want to read to you these uh, few verses, beginning in Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the God of peace, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we need to learn in our lives to think positively and prayerfully. Did you see the very first word of verse number four? Ready? Say it with me. Rejoice. And by the way, if you didn't get it then, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So yes, rejoicing is very, very important for us to do as we think about our lives and as we think about going through life. Then he says, uh, he follows up rejoicing with the subject of prayer. And as we pray, we're supposed to be thinking about what God has for us. So thinking positively and prayerfully in such a manner that God has designed for us to think in our own lives. First uh, Samuel 30 uh, in verse 6 there, here's what the Bible says. This was a situation in David's life, um, and I won't uh, go into all the context and everything uh, for sake of time, but it says here, and David was greatly distressed. Have you ever found a day or had a day where you were greatly distressed? It says, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was green. So not only was he discouraged, but everybody else was around, everybody else around was discouraged, and every man for his sons and for his daughters. But here's what it says about David. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We need to learn how to think positively and prayerfully, knowing that God has a plan. God's going to do something. Nehemiah 8.10, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is a holy day unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Catch the end of the verse. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know why a lot of Christians don't have strength right now? Because they don't find joy in their lives. They're not thinking positively. They're not thinking prayerfully in their lives. We can look at Acts 26, verse 2. We can look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Great verses that remind us to think positively and prayerfully. Third thought for this point is this. Think about good things. You say, well, that makes sense. Well, one of the reasons why we have stinking thinking is because we're not thinking about the right things. So we need to learn how to have to think about the good things. You say, what should I think about? I'm glad you asked. The Lord gives us this instruction from Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Hey, we go back to the belt of truth, right? Part of our armor. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things were of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Here he gives you a list of some things to be able to follow. Um, and when it comes to following these things, God reminds us that we uh, need to think in such a way that we have good thoughts, not evil and wicked thoughts. Uh, let me follow that up by sharing with you from 1 Corinthians 13 when it comes to the subject of love. Uh, love, the foundation of it is making sure that we have uh, God's truth in our lives. He says, charity suffereth long and is kind. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Uh, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doesn't have pride, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, 
thinketh no evil. Whoa, hold on a second. So if we have real love in our lives, we need to be thinking that which is right, that which is positive, what God wants in people's lives, not evil about people. I wish that person would do this. I, yeah, you know, when it, there's all kinds of things that we can think about other people, right? What about love? It says it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Here we go. See the, the, the belt of truth shown several times, times here and other pieces of the armor that we can read into it. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. If you want to have victory in the mind sieges of life, we need to get rid of the stinking thinking and make sure that we put the right things into our minds. So think about good things, not evil and wicked things. If you're having a problem with this, that, and the other, hey, if you're wrestling with hatred, which the Bible says is murder, let me encourage you to deal with that and let God help you to change that to have good thoughts. Some of you are bitter about your past. Let's let God change that. Uh, what about perhaps the lust that you may have? Some of you are, uh, uh, are addicted to some different things. Let's let God help you with that by changing your thinking. What about fear? Hey, we know how fear can uh, change us. God, can, when it comes to fear and the anxieties that we have, let's let God change those fears and help us to have the right thinking. Think about good things. And then, not just think about good things, but then also think about good actions. As we think about the right things, it's going to reprogram your life because we know that our actions follow our thinking pattern. Our thinking pattern is affected by our faith, our trust in God's Word. And so when it comes to uh, our, our actions, we need to make sure that we think then on these good things, but Philippians 4, 9, let's take it one more step. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Let's kind of think about this. When it comes to the armor, the armor does not work unless we have the helmet of salvation, the mind the mind helps everything else work. The feet don't work. The arms don't work. The heart don't, It all is connected to the mind, right? Well, how does all this stuff get into our mind? The Apostle Paul just addressed it right there in verse number nine, right? He says, those things which ye have both learned and received. And he talks about some of the senses. Heard and seen in me do. So, these influences that we have, we need to take them in and then we need to live them out. Well, how are we going to live those out is by changing our thinking and learning to do the right thing. I know we can't come to church right now, but when it comes to choosing to sit still and to participate and to gather together with a church service online or when we can come to church, you willingly take that action. Why? Because you have the right thinking about church. No, I have to go to church. Oh man, do I got to do this today? Oh man, I'm just going to show up late for church, whether it's on, isn't it interesting? Uh, some of us are online, uh, uh, late to church. Even when it's online, all we do is click a button, right? No. When we think about taking these good actions, let's make sure that we have the right actions in our life. Uh, notice that we are to carry out what we have allowed to reach our mind. And by the way, whatever you put in your mind is what's going to be lived out. And how should we put those things in our mind? By following and seeing good examples. Here, seeing the example of the Apostle Paul is shown to us in our text. Philippians 2, 5 reminds us that we can watch and see the example of Jesus Christ and let that affect us as well. Okay, so bring every thought into captivity. Think positively and prayerfully. Think about good things. Think about good actions. And the last thought I'll mention to you tonight is this. Protect your senses. Protect your senses. Psalm 101 and we note verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Uh, we look at also Colossians 2, 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. As we think about Christ, we think about who he is and what he's doing. We need to learn how to let Christ and what he does establish um, life and to take a stand for him. So when it comes to life, yeah, hey, we can make rules. I'm not going to do this or whatever. But let me remind you, rules are better followed as we see kingdom principle living, not just the, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, when it comes to our rules, let's make sure that we're living according to the grace of the word of God. And so we learn from the Word of God, Colossians 3, 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Again, seeking those things which are above. What is your thinking about? We're talking about kingdom principles. 
We're making sure that as representations of God's kingdom, we have his armor on. We want to have victory. And guess what? The whole armor of God needs to be on, but it starts where? The helmet of salvation. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Um, very, very important. That's where you got to start. And by the way, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, we'd love to show you how you can know him even right now. Uh, if you would just uh, send us an email, if you want to do our online Bible study, like I mentioned about earlier, we got over a dozen people who are doing that right now. We would encourage you to let's learn about Christ and how you can walk with him. And then let's let God change the thinking that we have. Let's make sure that we allow our thinking to be molded to the word of God. And those places where we fail, those places where the devil may have put up a mind siege or he has that, uh, that stronghold in our mind, let's get rid of it. Let's beat it once and for all. Let's let God help us to have victory over these areas of our lives that we seemingly can't get over. And by the way, you say, oh, I can never get over it. Let's go back to the principles we talked about. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we understand there hath no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. You have a common problem. It's called sin. And Jesus Christ is the one who provides the hope to be able to find victory over those sins and those things that we allow to affect us so much in our flesh and as we're talking about here in this study, in our mind. So there are some studies, some questions here for you. Considering your thoughts recently, how would you describe them to the Lord? Do you have some stinking thinking or godly thinking? Let me encourage you to think about that, thinking about your strongholds. But let's make sure that we take some steps this week to let God change the thinking of our lives. And then when we come back to worship him this coming weekend, let's allow our minds to be open and free to let the Holy Spirit, through God's Word, speak to us and change us even more. Let's not let those strongholds stay. Let's get rid of them. Can I pray with you? Then I'll let you go. Lord, I thank you for the tonight. I thank you for the Word of God and how it provides great strength, hope, and even forgiveness for those places in our lives where we have failed you. Lord, for those who are watching right now who don't know Jesus as Savior, our prayer is that you would draw them to Jesus Christ and they would be saved. Lord, help them to reach out. Lord, help us to be able to encourage them and strengthen them according to your words. They would come to know you as Savior. Lord, also for Christians who are wrestling. Lord, this is not an uncommon fact that Christians wrestle with things in their minds. There's a whole litany and slew of things that we could list that we are wrestling with right now. And if we were thinking about them, Lord, we would just be ashamed to bring them before you. But Lord, that's exactly where we need to bring it. Lord, help us to bring these thoughts to you. Lord, help us to admit the strongholds that the devil has gotten into our lives. Lord, help us to find victory in them, calling upon your uncommon grace that is so powerful and so victorious. We thank you for how you'll speak and work in our lives. Bring us back again in the future to be able to minister, to encourage, and lift up each other as we worship you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so good to see you. Thank you very much for tuning in again. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, please let us know. But so great to see you tonight. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.